I'm telling you, good brother, Pete Dunn is going to win the North American title, and he's going to bring that title to the NXT UK just for the upcoming UK takeover Cardiff. Listen, Sydney G, you know I've been watching a lot of your preview and predictions, and sometimes you make stupid picks, okay? You know what we're trying to do right now? We are taking over NXT Party for Stefan and Jerry. I'm making these two guys very proud, and you're talking about regular NXT American. Listen, Sydney, listen to me. You need to understand. When I signed that contract you gave me three, four months ago to sign with NoDQ.com, Listen, don't give me the stupid look on your face. I'm trying to be very professional, and you're just rummaging your mouth about Pete Dunn winning the North American Championship at an NXT TakeOver in Canada, eh? Do you want me to message Evan? Let me say this to you. About four months ago, when I lost that WrestleMania bet, when Kofi Kingston... What? When you did what? When you did what? When you did what? Four months ago, when you did what? Welcome everybody to a very special NXT Party episode for August 7th of this week's episode of NXT UK. Well, changing of the host because our good dear friends Stefan Osborne and Jerry Slaughter are in Toronto, Canada for TakeOver Toronto and SummerSlam Weekend. So, these gentlemen let myself... And along with the co-host here, good brother Chris Willis, we are hosting this week's episode of NXT Party. Good brother Chris, how excited are you? I'm very happy until you had a surprise guest out of the blue. Surprise, surprise, right? Surprise. That's right, y'all. So just to keep the NXT Party tradition, we always have to have special guests. And I figure since like in past AEW's video and the recent prediction video, I always say that very interesting message. That is right, y'all. Here it is, introducing, making his video debut for the NXT party. Say hello to, he is one of Good Brother Chris's best friend. He is also a personal trainer. He is an inspirational, not just to Good Brother Chris, but to me. And he is training to become a wrestler. And by the way, he likes beach ball, y'all. But yeah. I digress. Say hello to Evan LG Francis. How's it going, Evan? How are you oh, doing? Oh, I love that. I love that. This is this is fantastic. I'm uh, honored, privileged. And you know I love you, right? I love you. I love uh, Chris. You're my brother. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it from here and plug it. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at right now, is a rising pro wrestler, the first pro wrestler from Richmond, California. I am the main player, the hater slayer, the Mac Daddy, the Daddy Mac, the Don Dada. Ain't none hotter. Richmond's first, Richmond's finest. Chris, there's none higher. You could call me your highness. King Francis, the man who chopped the soul out your body, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is right. So if you, but we're going to get into the plugs and all that. So if you go to Evan's um, Instagram page, you'll see, like, the WrestleMania 35 bet. But digress. Yeah. We're going to save that towards the end. So with that yeah, being let's said. let's save that towards the end. <laughs> that's right. We're going to talk about this week's episode of NXT UK. And, boy, this is a pretty interesting episode, even though, like, even though this is TakeOver Toronto Week by NXT UK, they're focusing more of it's their upcoming TakeOver 
three weeks for now, which is NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff. But we're going to kick right. things off with a very a tribute video package of the recent passing of, of course, Harley Race. And when seeing this video package, you saw like so many highlights from his career during his NWA days to his WWE days and then his retirement in the early 90s where he's starting to manage like a couple of the wrestlers so far. And then you see like a couple of the interviews like from Jerry the King Waller to Jake the Snake Roberts, Ric Flair, John Cena, and Steve Austin. And that is like a very touchy tribute to the late great Harley Race. And it kind of blows me away like how how WWE keep this momentum. Now, I'm going to start off with you, good brother Chris, because I know that when you find out about the recent passing of Harley Race, that kind of hits you hard. What do you think of this video package, real quick? Um, I was very surprised of uh, NXT uh, UK paid tribute to Harley Race. That was really awesome. That was really incredible. I really enjoyed that two-minute, well, three-minute uh, video uh, clip of Harley Race former eight-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion. It sucks for me because I own that Rebecca title, champ that Rebecca championship, that I'm not going to get it autographed by Harley Race. So it sucks. So Harley Race, you will be missed. God bless you. That is yeah. right. And what do you think of the video package so far, Evan? Um, honestly, Harley Race is somebody that I uh, followed and studied for a, a while, man. You know, I'm a historian of wrestling in general. And, you know, seeing some of his matches with Flair and and roads and guys like that man it, it it's sad to see you know that that just shows you man like just as quickly as we have them to enjoy we got to you know cherish them because they'll be they can't be gone just as quick you know what i mean we got to appreciate them while they're here i definitely agree as well and that is like a very classy way for wwe to do like showing this three minute video package of the trivia of harley race as well even though like when Normally when WWE airs on like the cable broadcast, they just show just the graphic. But then I know we had like recent event going on, but then they had to do something special like on the WWE Network. And that is like the perfect way to honor and pay respect to one of the great legends in the whole yeah. wrestling industry as well. So my heart and my sincerest condolences goes out to the loved ones, family, friends, and fans of Harley Race. So with that being said... From after this touchy video package, we're going to go ahead and move on to NXT UK, which it takes place in Plymouth, England. Your commentators are Vic Joseph and Nigel McGuinness. And right when intros and everything happened, we have a first match, of course. But before that, they show kind of like what is um, the, the hype for NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff again three weeks from now. Yeah. And also they announced like, the main event preview of this of this week's episode of NXT UK, which is, of course, the Bomber Dave Massive versus Joe Coffey as well. But we're just going to go jump into the opening of the match, which you have, of course, the Scottish Supernova, Noam Dar versus, of course, Ashton Smith. And I must say, this is just like a pretty decent match, but I feel like this is like more of a showcasing match for Noam Dar. Since now that... Face it, Noam Dar is officially finito with 205 Live. And he's mm. now fully in NXT UK. That's what Vic Joseph said while Noam Dar come out. is that Noam Dar comes to NXT UK because he is treated like a star here. Unlike what general manager Drake Maverick has been doing on 205 Live. And Nigel McGuinness agreed because as you all know about Drake Maverick's the only thing he focuses about is that jobber 24-7. It's like, <laughs> Jesus. And that's kind of like shifting more focus. And I know if you guys check out hashtag 205 Life Matters past episode where Simple Man Noah Foster and the holiday Chris Mays. And of course, Chris and I made our past appearance as well. We all know how we feel about the title and how it kind of affected by it. And that's what Noam Dar is very affected by it is now he's now shifting into the NXT UK brand. Now, um, Evan, what do you think of this match so far between Noam Dar and Ashton Smith? I mean, I think the match was great. Um, for for It was a good showcase, like you said, for Noam Dar. It was great for him. Um, it wasn't great for Smith. I have my own little thoughts on that. I think he's a guy with that's loaded with potential. Um, but he's, he's one of those guys that it has to click for. 
No M Dar though he's been he's been on since he's first come to WWE he's been on the you know on the cusp of stardom mm-hmm. you know and uh I like his style I like the fact that he was quite aggressive in this match you know what I mean against Aston Smith and Aston couldn't handle it you know and and as usual he comes up short a lot you know what I mean Yeah I can definitely see that because like with any other past matches, Ashton Smith, that is just like a your typical <laughs> enhancement match or mm-hmm. just like a one of those showcasing match with like any other of the NXT UK stars for that matter. Right. Uh, yeah. And then Good Brother Chris, do you have anything? Um, yeah. It was re- I know it was a good match between uh, Smith and Noam Dar. I know Noam Dar had to really work on the legs mm-hmm. because I know he's shorter than Smith. Yep. Yeah, you know he did what he had to do. I like the part like Norm Dar's trying to play the mind games a little bit. The boy who cried wolf. Oh yeah. And then yeah. later on during the match, um, Smith was laid out, but he was trying to pretend like, oh, he's gonna go for the finish. He's gonna play along. Then Norm Dar had to see, okay, what's going on with this dude? Schoolboy, then kicked to the leg again, and then Norm Dar finally hit him with the finisher. One, two, three. Norm Dar wins another uh, victory for Norm Dar. Two yeah. last couple weeks. So, like you said, Evan, it was a showcase for Norm Dar. Exactly. He's a he's a good talent. I think he's going to climb up the ranks. You know, he, he's got some time before he gets to that uh, UK title scene or whatnot. But he, he's he's up there, man. And he's, he's doing really well for himself. Yeah, I definitely agree as well. And it's what Good Brother Chris mentioned about the whole, like, you know, the boy who cried with part. So, Right in the middle of the match, like, it's a slow start in the beginning. You have other, like, stars that have been, like, chanting, dar, 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 da, da, dar, dar, da, dar, of course. And then a lot of submission counters and rest holds. But I must say, with Ashton Smith, like, he is trying to be, like, the rising star for it. But, like, after seeing what he did, like, a high elevation drop kick to Noam Dar in, like, the highest peak, it kind of, like, says that, you know, he does have some potential for it. But with the right. whole boy, the cry wolf part, if that's when Ashton Smith did strike Dar with the reverse whip, which is the back elbow at that strike, Norm Dar's mm-hmm. face, and that's when Norm Dar did cover his eye, pretending that there's something going on with his eye for that. So you saw referee Daryl Schwarm trying to check it in on him, and Ashton Smith, he was coming off from the turnbuckle to see what's going on, but then you know that psychologically... It's like my game. So he's starting to about to attack Norm Dar, but Norm did like dodge for it and then of course continue on with that. So with that being said, it was just a pretty much a good showcasing match, a lot of potential going on. And at the end, like as Chris said, like Norm Dar did hit him with the finisher called the double war roller and won. So for that, it's a pretty good start just to showcase like what Noam Dar can bring to the table, especially the fact that some people don't watch 205 Live or yeah. if they watch you know, the Cruiserweight Classic from almost three years ago, I believe. Right. Years ago. Time yep. fly. Don't it it yeah. don't even seem like three years ago, though. Oh, yeah. And so that's what they're showcasing Noam Dar for. So after the match, um, Rat. Ratsy, they came into the ring and started to interview Noam Dar, asking, um, congratulating Noam Dar with another victory, and also, um, how does he feel to join the NXT UK brand? And mm-hmm. good brother Chris, can you explain what the Noam Dar said? Oh, pop the brakes, pop the brakes! I'm the supernova number eleven, Noam Dar. I'm here to make NXT UK. Great again, and pinkies up. I got an <laughs> opportunity to be at NXT UK Cardiff because I'm just a supernova. <laughs> ah, out of here. All right. <sighs> and what is the takeaway? Short and sweet. Yep. And what is the takeaway from all the interview, Good Brother Chris? Um, all serious. Um, Noam Dar is a great talent. But I'm really shocked that he's going to be a part of the pay per view for NXT Takeover. He he's been like he's been hot and cold when it comes to his wins and losses. But we do find out later on that I can't say right now that it was really not the case. Hmm. Hmm. That is kind of like a mystery to say because like hmm. when he says like he want to be want to have a match at Takeover Cardiff, there's like a lot of endless. Comp- 
possibility of like who's gonna challenge and what Dar. Um, right. Evan, what do you think of the um, his interview so far and the outcome? Uh, I like it. It was like I said, short, pretty short and sweet, concise. He made it known what he wants to do. He wants to match a takeover, Carter. Um, make your point. Like you said, we can't really spoil it yet, but that wasn't mm-hmm. all the way the case. But I think for what it was, it was a good vehicle to get us to the next point. Exactly. And so we're going to be saving to that next point later on throughout the show so far. So we're going to find out who's going to, what's going to lead to like, you know, everything that's going on in TakeOver Cardiff, but we'll see. Now, after that, they showcase, they did a bit of a promo for the upcoming uh, match that's going to happen in NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff, which is the WWE UK title between the current champ, Walter, versus Tyler Bate. Now, you guys saw last week that Imperial did brutally attack Trent Seven, and then, like, it was right after the match, I believe. But Tyler Bates did come out, and then he did attack Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner first, and then attacking Alexander Wolf. And then there was, like, a brief stare down between him and Walter for that. But cut through earlier that week, like, at the WWE UK Performance Center, NXT UK Performance Center, whatever, somewhere UK Performance Center, um, when Tyler did came out from the from the trainer, doctor, locker room, um, someone in the backstage interview corner, but I asked Tyler, your thoughts, please, on TakeOver Cardiff. Tyler wrote, Tyler said, well, Imperial helped me out with my mood. Trent is there not medically clear, but I'm 100%. And Walter, I will not, not disrespecting the UK title. Come take over. It's me and you, one on one, and I'll become the first ever, two times WWE UK champion. And then he walked out. So he just wanted to set a record to Walter that that title has to show, show respect and show being a champ. Because with Walter, I mean, face it, he is the ring general. He has the rest of the Imperium stable, like wrecking havoc in the yeah. NXT UK scene being like the most dominating of it all. I mean, prior to that, of course, you have Ring Conf in the Indies. So you show show that how much Tyler means a lot, especially being the first ever WWE UK champion at, you know, with the whole like WWE UK term for that. So right. Evan, what do you think of the interview so far? And I liked it. I liked the video package. Um, I liked everything that was going on with it. I like, and you know, it's crazy. A lot of people uh, looking forward to the match at, at NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff, you know, they they count Tyler out a lot, you know, because Walter's been just on the tear. You know, he went through uh, Pete. He went through Trent. And, you know, a lot of people are just predicting he's going to go through Tyler. But a lot of people forget Tyler Bates is the first UK champion anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, this guy is the guy who beat Pete Dunne himself right. to become the NXT UK champion. So, you know, I think a lot of people might be uh, – underestimating Tyler Bate a little bit, but uh, I think that he's proving week by week since, you know, Trent Seven got attacked that he, he's a force to be reckoned with and he's somebody that Walter needs to take serious. And he's making the feud interesting. A minute ago, I wouldn't have known if it was going to be interesting between Walter and Tyler, but like I said, I forgot almost that Tyler was the first NXT UK champ, you know? So Tyler put, he, it lit a fire under him, it seems like. He's getting aggressive. He's, you know, he's on Imperium. He's not letting them come to him. He's coming to them. And I like mm-hmm. that. I, I think that Tyler's getting the upper hand. I think that's great. Exactly. And like you showed, like, how much Tyler has been changing, th- you know, throughout the years. And yeah. now it's like you can take out anybody in particular, especially with his incredible strength, despite his yeah. height and whatnot. Um, Chris, yeah. what do you think of this and what takes away from the interview? And what do you hope for, like, leading up to take over Cardiff? Um, the promo was uh, short and sweet and straight to the point. I like the aggressive of uh, Tyler Bate. He's not afraid of Walter. Yeah. He's not afraid of him whatsoever. He's telling people, hey, I was the first ever UK heavyweight championship in that amazing 16-man tournament back in 2017 in January. Just awesome. You know, a lot of people will kind of really forget about that because, you know, when Pete Dunn held it, he held it for so long and forever. Yeah, yeah. 
And Walter, he is on a tear. He's like, hey, you know, is Walter going to finally take Tyler Bates seriously at NXT UK Cardiff? Yes, he is. Hands down. You may not. He may not admit it. But Walter, he's going to have, you know, he's going to have to pack a lunch. Not a big lunch, but a little bit of a small lunch. Uh It's going to be a long day at the office because, you know, Walter, I'm going to say this right now. Did you know Walter has better chops than my best friend, Evan G. Francis? Do you know what's funny? Yeah, you know what's funny? I was just about to say this will probably be your <laughs> least favorite match because of the chops. Because of the I know you, I know you suffering from PTSD over there from the explosive chops from the impacts that you suffered since you want to bring that up. Since you want to bring that, up. you remember how you was coming down to your knees? Ah! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Sound like a dinosaur getting hunted in Jurassic Park. Ah! Okay, 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 okay. All right. We don't have to relive the whole WrestleMania 35 back. He, he brought it up. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let me go ahead and take a long sip of tea before we go. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> Look at his face. He can't stand it. <laughs> I, I swear to God, when Jerry and, and Stefan listen to this, they're going to be like, what the hell is going on here? I mean, and, they know you, about what happened to the WrestleMania 35 at hell. Jerry had, to sing, mm-hmm. Jerry had to sing Baby Shark because I won the bet for the main event match. So, just saying. Chris is a little bitter. Don't, don't worry about it. He's all right. He's all right. All right. Anyway, let's move on to, like, after commercial break, of course. You have is a in-ring promo with the current NXT UK tag team champion, the Grizzle Young Vets. Of course, they always dress to impress. Well, mostly James Drake with his, like, plaid suits, which I definitely love. So, you sure. guys, everybody come out here. And, of course... Y'all know how I feel about Zach Gibson. If you hate Zach Gibson, shoes up. Yeah, I have my flip flop here. So, and I'm gonna <laughs> say, hold this up loud and proudly every time I talk about Zach Gibson as well. So, Grizzle Young Bad came into the ring and cut their promo. Of course, Zach Gibson. He is like, I am Liverpool best. This right here is James Drake, and then talking about like how. He overcome, like, when WWE UK tournament last year and then how James Drake overcome it and take over Blackpool and how they overcome it there. And then, of course, Gibson said, a little bird told me Gallus potential a challenge for the title. And yet, of course, I'm surprised Zach Gibson actually gave a compliment to Gallus, of course, being like most of like the dominating tag team of all time, of all, and how they're busting their butts up. Unlike the other tag team, which I forgot what James Drake called them in the nickname. Do you know, Good Brother Chris? Are you talking about the stream beans of um, Webster and Mark Andrews? Pretty much so, but. In the British you know, version, right? you know, you know, you know. I want to get this off my chest. Here, good thing you brought that up. First of yes. all, Webster and Mark Andrews they finally came back as a tag team because Webster did had a little injury. He was gone for like three months. Mm-hmm. Them coming out, challenging, they won a spot at the tag team titles. I'm sorry, they're like, okay. I've been doing some little wins and losses uh, category for the last couple of days. Their tag team record is not the best. The hmm. best tag team record right now is really Gallus of, right. of Mark Coffee and Wolfgang. By the way, Wolfgang is always angry all the time. He scares me sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. But I digress. But when when you win matches, you get opportunities. When you lose matches, did they just you know? I don't know if Webster and Andrews got lost at catering. Like there was no more tea. At the catering, they were trying to look for some croissants or fish and chips. Crumpets. Whatever. Still. Like, why are you, you you keep saying, oh, we don't want to miss this takeover. Okay, I understand, but you have not been winning as a tag team. Your partner just came back. You got to be in the back of the line. I'd rather see the grizzled young veterans versus Godless at the NXT card of pay-per-view. I know it's heel versus heel. I'd rather see that yeah. because those two teams, and trust me, I've been doing my research, they have the best tag team record so far. 
Win it when you win matches, you get opportunities. Mm-hmm. If you lose matches, you're back at the line. I do not want to see a triple threat tag team title match at Cardiff. I don't want to see yeah. Webster and, and and Andrews. I'm sorry. I know. I mean, I don't want to see them either. And then I'm glad you pointed out because like right when I was in the middle of talking about Gallus coming out when Mark Harf Coffee say, Oi, oi, oi. And then he told Gibson and Drake they did not petition a challenge. They did not campaign the challenge or they never asked. But they wanted a challenge from themselves for that. And of course, and I want to see them like cutting, shooting some promos back and forth, even though that Gibson did pay much more respect to Gallas as a stable. And then out comes Mandrew and Flash Morgan Webster. And by the way, their tag team name, and I found out because of the matching jacket they're well wearing, they call themselves the South Wales Connection. Hmm. Yeah. South Wales Connection. And I know Mark Andrews wanted to, like, want him and Flash Morgan was and want to be included in the match in Cardiff because that's where they're from, Cardiff. Like, seriously. I mean, I'm glad that Gibson did point it out about saying, like, for them to be out for a while, especially, like, with, you know, injuries and whatnot and giving high more praises, but when it comes to praises... It has to pay for a price for that all together. And so Mark agrees with Grizzle Young Vets, which surprisingly enough. But then again, Gibson, he said, like, we're not coming out here to fight, but we're punching our ticket to Cardiff. And he said, wanted to have the match stated by Mr. Johnny Saint, of course, to have the match happen. They will defend the title, but... Who knows which tag team will happen for the, a lot of back and forth. And lastly, like I said, Zach Gibson closed it off say, this title, stay grizzle. And then cue to the music and all that. So it's like pretty much like a whole back and forth action. Like I feel like Southwest, South Wales Connection, I keep seeing Southwest like the year. I'm like, what the hell? South Wales Connection <laughs> kind of killed off the promo a little move for it. But then again, like, Paying respect and the compliments kind of like a 50 50. But overall, it's a pretty good promo. But we'll, but it shows like a full shadowing that who's going to be the competitor for the NXT UK tag team titles. Um, Evan, what do you think of everything going on all together? So. Well, as I, as I, you know, as I sip my Perrier water, I was contemplating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't look at me like that, Chris. It's Perrier. Perrier, all right? But, <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the uh, tag title situation goes, I have to agree. Uh, the Grizzle Young Veterans actually are a great tag team. They've been uh, holding their own for a while now in the, in the NXT tag team division, the UK tag team division, I should say. Um, but like you said, Gallus has been probably the, the most consistent tag team of them all. So it's obvious that they deserve the shot. Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster don't belong anywhere near the match at all. Like, they don't even deserve to get a qualifying match. But, you know, um, like you said, the hometown pop, the hometown thing like that, it's it's going to benefit everybody involved. So, uh, you know, we'll see what they can do and see if they can earn their way into the match. But, you know, as far as earning it, I don't think they earned it. But I think that it'll be a... Uh, I think it'd be a good, a better match with them in it, but I don't think they earned the opportunity, you know. But I like the segment. Uh, everybody got their point across, and you know what? Out of everybody, Gallus looked like the most legit team out there, you know, because yeah. everybody was praising them. Even like you said, the Grizzle Young Vets were uh, were crediting them and validating them and saying, "Hey, at least they were winning matches and doing this, that, and the other." When they were talking to you know Webster and Andrews, so um. It's going to be an interesting next couple of weeks to see how this thing shapes up. Yeah, indeed. Good brother, Chris, do you want to add anything about it? Since I know you have like strong expression about the South Wales connection. They don't deserve to be in the match. The only way they can be at the pay-per-view is the dark matches for the TV tapings after the pay-per-view. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Hands down. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. Yep. Well, we're gonna For once, see. I agree with you, Chris. For once, I agree with you. Thank Aww. you, good sir. 
Anyway, but with that being said, we're just going to go ahead and move on. Like then we have it's a video promo that's going to be hyping up about the NXT UK TakeOver card. But they show like highlights from the first ever NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool. Like everything that happened and then leading up to that. And then we have like a couple of like interview like, you know, going into Cardiff, like, one of them from Ginny, and then Mark Andrews, Zaya Brookside, also the NXT UK sh- coach, Sean Hayes, which I believe he's also in charge, he's like a booker or something from Progress Wrestling, because that name sounds familiar to me, because I do follow some of the independent wrestling company in the UK, but don't quote me on it, I gotta double check, and then an interview from Liguero. Nina Samuel, thank God she talks. Killer <laughs> Kelly. And also, an interesting like interview promo from Jordan Devlin. And he's saying, why is the Irish ace isn't in the main event in, in TakeOver Cardiff? You know, let me take this, Sydney. I got mm-hmm. this. Because when I saw this video package, first of all, they, 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 talk, they, yeah. they talked about the... Yeah, I got this, okay? Anyway. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> Hey, slow your roll, bro. You know my hands is free, and then you don't, you don't live that far away. You don't live that far away. <laughs> okay, 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 guys, 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 I'll guys. guys. It's here. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Travis Mink and Rhea Ripley. Go ahead, good brother Chris. Let's all get along, That's here, y'all. Saying, I was so really interrupted by our special guest Evan G. Francis. Don't get chopped. Don't get chopped. <laughs> When I saw this video package, yes, they talked about the first ever UK pay-per-view. It was really amazing back in January of earlier this year. But when I hear superstars talking about, I want to be at this card, I want to be at this pay-per-view, when I especially hear from Killer Kelly, oh, I want to be at this pay-per-view, um, honey, what have you done lately? Mm-hmm. You've been on the Thank worst you. lo- You've been on the worst losing streak in NXT UK history. Mm-hmm. That's like if I heard Jack Stars, who's also a jobber, saying, I want to be a part of the pay-per-view. Jerry and Stefan would punch their TV hearing that crap. Oh, my God. Now, the only person who really deserves to be a part of this pay-per-view, maybe two people. I would say Jordan Devlin and Travis Banks. Mm-hmm. Because those are the only two superstars who are, who are great stars when it comes to the men's division. Now, if I say one person from, you know, for the women, I got to say the lovely, the beautiful Jenny. She deserves a spot. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. I felt like this video, I felt like this. the people talking about, I want to be at the pay-per-view, I want to be at the pay-per-view, I want to be at the pay-per-view. Look, sit down, shut your ass up, sit down catering, eating your fish and chips, and, and just enjoy the show. Seriously, you don't deserve a spot. Nothing's going to be handed to you. You can't mm-hmm. just say, oh, please, oh, please, please, please. I want to be a part of it. Please, please, please. Yeah, Shut don't up. sound like Chris when he begging me from chopping them. Don't sound like that. <laughs> don't sound like okay. that. No desperation. I'm, I'm, I'm done because he... Oh, so, okay, okay. Um, Evan, do you, do you have any takeaway from this promo? Yeah, uh, you know, the crazy it? thing about it is um, it that Cardiff and the, the TakeOver pay-per-view in general... It's wide open. You know what I mean? We know we know where a few of the matches are going to be. We were aware of a few things, but the card is isn't set in like it isn't set in stone all the way. So people still have opportunities to get in there some way, somehow. And, uh, you know, that's what makes it exciting. That's why I kind of really like what NXT UK is doing. They're presenting like opportunities to people who probably wouldn't have got them before. Um, and I think that's great. I lo- like you said, I like Jenny. Uh, I think that Jenny deserves to, to be in the be in the pay-per-view. I think that, like you said, you know, the other guys, too. I mean, you can see you can see it in Jordan Devlin. He, he's excellent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can see it in him and you can see it in Travis Banks, too. But we'll see what happens, man. Like I said, NXT UK is setting us up for the next couple of weeks to see what's going on. And it's going to be interesting. Indeed. Like. I mean, all their convincing about, like, they want to be in Cardiff was great. But, like, the only person that kind of stands out to me the most, well, okay, besides Travis Bing, but also Jordan definitely, that definitely sounds more convincing as well because what he had done lately, he's trying to be more dominant in the yeah. that. And if you guys saw 
like on the predictions video for NXT TakeOver Toronto Good Brother Chris and I has, I feel that the only opportunity Jordan Devlin will have, and yes, I'm going to say for my pick for like the North American title, and the reason why I choose Pete Dunne is because there's no mid-card title for the UK brand. And why not have Jordan Devlin versus Pete Dunne for the North American title? But that's kind of like a whole highly and likely and all likelihood to quote our dear NoDQ.com boss man slash a dear friend, Aaron Riff. But mm. it could be all the endless possibility going on. Rhea Ripley, I can see her having a match at TakeOver, but you know it's just going to be kind of like a grudge match going on. But I'm going to save that later on, what I meant to say about her. Um, everything, Everybody else is good. Travis Banks, I know that's going to happen for that interview. For that. And yes, when I speak about interview, about the video promo, it's going to lead on to the next interview I'll be talking about. So overall, it's a good video um promo and all that and good brother chris right. did say like a really good point about it as well gotcha yep so then after that commercial and then backstage interview where ratsy is right by um nxt uk general manager johnny saint's office and travis banks got out of the office and ratsy did ask him Will you? What would you be doing inside Johnny Saint's office? As soon as Travis Banks trying to give the answer, and I know Good Brother Chris is not gonna like this at all. I'm sorry, Chris. Oh, the South Wales connection came by as man Mark Andrews say, "Hey, knock on the door," and then both guys came inside to Johnny Saint's office. Oh. But we're going to get into, like, that. But then um, Travis Banks did say that he wanted a match. He did praise Noam Darbid, but he wanted a competition. So with right. that, um, Johnny Singh granted kind of a match between him and Noam Dar. Good brother Chris, what do you think of Travis Banks' interview? Well, Travis did say in the interview he wants to be a part of TakeOver because, you know, he wasn't there for the... Well, he got taken out of the last one due to the attack of uh, Jordan Devlin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, like he said, Noam Dar is a liar. He had to work for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was not given to him. Right. If these two do have a match, okay, that's fine. But on a TakeOver, Cardiff, it's not my... Uh, cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Eyes rolled. Eyes rolled. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't want to see that on an NXT TakeOver card. I, I just can't see it. I, that's just me, my opinion. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I definitely agree as well because, like, I feel like with Banks versus Noam Dar should just be, like, a TV tape taping show i don't see it in the car i mean like i know noam dar is not fully in nxt uk he is done with 205 life which i know it disappointed like you and me good brother chris also no on holiday part of 205 lives matter but but i know he's moving on to like a bigger better opportunity what he definitely deserves especially with the push that he needs as well but with that being said um Decent interview, not much to talk about, but hopefully it's just going to be a adjusting match so far. Right. Evan, what do you think of Travis's response? I liked it. I like that he's aggressive. He's staying aggressive, and I, that's what I've always liked about Travis Bank. He, uh, he keeps moving mm -hmm. forward. He keeps, you know, pushing. Mm -hmm. And I think that the match between him and uh, Noem, I think that's going to be great. Chris, you were saying that maybe it wouldn't be a... a thing for TakeOver Cardiff, but I think that, you know, this will challenge them to elevate, push each other and have a great match. And whoever comes out of it, one step closer to some, you know, maybe some gold later on. So I think this is interesting. I think those two, I think those two, um, Jordan Devlin and maybe a couple other guys, those are the, you know, the top guys, you know, within the division. Anyway, you got, you could throw Dave Mastiff, you know, who we'll talk about later. Um, you could throw those guys in there, but it's, it's wide open right now as far as the UK title picture. And I think that the guy to win this match could be thrown somewhere in there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that would make a pink, like, you know, wonderful opportunity for both guys. 
Yeah. All right. So after Travis Banks left, and lo and behold, a couple seconds later, Southwest. <laughs> South, South Wales Con- <laughs> South <laughs> Wales connection came out of the office and Ratsy did interview them as well like what are they doing same same old question to Travis Banks as well even though Flash Morton who was who did admit that he was like injured and put to the sideline but then he commanded Mark Andrews for all the hard work he's been doing while he was out and they're ready for like a top ready to bring anybody out, but then getting the op- title opportunity as well. Good brother Chris, you want to take away with this everything? Because I know you have like strong, strong. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep this short. Uh, well, they are so young veterans, and uh, Gala said, we, you know, we got to earn the opportunity. Okay, all serious. Okay, yes, they have a right. They have to earn their opportunity. I like what they said. They have to earn it. They can't just like, you know, the squeaky wheel hits the grapes. Because right. I know I know we're getting a match next week. I think it was uh, Webster making his return after three months mm-hmm. against Mark Coffey. Yep. You know, I know this is going to be like a proving ground, but mostly it's going to be a proving ground for Webster. He has not, he does not have the best record when it comes to one-on-one sure. matches whatsoever. He does not have the best. Trust me, I did my studying. But let's let's just see what happens. Yeah. You know, if Mark Coffey defeats Webster, then like, hey, you had your opportunity back of the line, yep. go at catering, <laughs> fish and chips, or play with your boy band with me, Mark Andrews. So it is what it is. So yeah. that's all I got to say. All right. Evan? I think that what Chris said was pretty much spot on. I think that might have chopped some sense into him because he's, he's talking a lot of sense today. You know, he... Last time I talked to him, he was talking ignorant, but now I, I've been chopped him and sound like Chris done got some sense. He, he's talking a lot. He's talking a lot of correct stuff today. Um, you know, Flash Morgan Webster has not won a lot of singles matches. So the fact that he gets this kind of match is a great opportunity for him. You know what I mean? To, you know, chop away at the competition a little bit. You want to chop Mark Coffey down the size a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he needs to get there. He needs to get to these matches and get to these wins. Chop, chop. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, I know they need to have, like, what they got to do to get this title opportunity. Like, who knows? Like, if Flash Morgan Webster defeated Mark Coffey, then they may get a title shot. Or if Mark Coffey defeated Flash Morgan Webster, will they get a title shot? Or how, like, they'll have their match, and then the week after next, we'll see Mark Andrew versus Wolfgang. And then, I don't know, it's probably going to be, like, a type of rubber match that will conclude it, like, are there, just to get, like, the number one contendership. So, but all decisions that have to be based on what Johnny Saints um, prefer and also Grizzle Young bet. Who knows? Right. Yeah. Alrighty, let's go ahead and move on to like the next part, which is we have is a tag team women's match, which you have a team of Jenny and Jazzy Gabber versus mm-hmm. Zaya Brookside and Piper Navin. So this match was pretty good at to all aspects, especially like I command both teams that they're working together as a dynamic. For that, especially with Jenny and Jazzy Gabber, I know that I was kind of like being a little bit negative about like you know how NXT UK is booking Jazzy Gabber as just Jenny's um, sidekick slash security card, whatever, like that. But they're actually working pretty quite well to say at least, and Amish was pretty fun. Um, yeah. Evan, what do you think of this match so far? Oh, I loved it. I actually really did like the match. Um... And like you said, I like Jen. I like the combination of Jenny and Jazzy. I like the fact that kind of Jazzy is kind of the diesel to Jenny Shawn Michaels right this second. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jazzy has all the potential to do her thing on her own and everything. But I think for where she's at right now, I think she's perfect where she's at right this second. Um, the match was great. I like. You know what I like about Jenny is that she's really, really, really aggressive, and she picks her spots well. Mm-hmm. And that showcased in the match a lot. Uh, 
this this uh, week on NXT UK. Everybody showed something though. I like the match a lot. I like Piper a lot too. All the, all four women are great. All right, so obviously we're going to get a good match. I think this was a really good showcase for Jenny though. Mm-hmm. I think this was this was a really good showing for her, and you know she's gaining steam and gaining momentum. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with that. But also, Jazzy did a really good job too, showcasing on her Absolutely. end too. Even Absolutely. though, like throughout the match, like you could hear like she's like screaming, "Jenny, Jenny, tag me, Jenny, come on, Jenny!" I'm trying to say any any German access accent, but <laughs> you know me, I can't do that. Chris it has a better exp- um, impersonation than me, but I digress. Okay. But showing with this whole dynamic for that and how much they they go all out, especially with Jenny's aggressiveness, like starting up, you know that she started to about to attack Zaya, but then Zaya did drop kick Jenny, and then mm-hmm. that's when it's like you know a lot of like back and forth striking, and then Zaya did tag Piper as of course Piper just did the double strike to Jenny and then tag back to Zaya. And but when Jenny, when she did the impressive head scissor, not once but twice, very blown away by that. And anything that she could do all together, like whether with Zaya Brooks, I even she trying to do it with Piper Naven, but then Piper did counter and then did just like a body slam for that for all it matters. Right. Yeah, and then of course Jenny tag Jazzy, and then she only strikes Zaya with a one punch, and then. She turned to Piper and then she's like, what? What do you want to do about it? And right. then slam Zaya again before, and then right when she attacked Jenny. And of course, like a lot of back and forth action going on. And then right when after Jenny strikes Zaya and then she trying to, to strike her, that's when Zaya rolls over Jenny and tag Piper. And then that's when Pi- Piper was starting to become more dominating by close lightning Jenny, but you can see that like she trying to counter, but then again, Piper did body slam her. And then again with the whole head scissoring situation. And then again, Jenny tag Jazzy. A lot of punch fest back and forth, back and forth action. It's like it's going to be slower than expected. But then again, Piper did kind of like a simple crossbody. Like yeah. through the ropes, which is kind of like okay, decent. But then again, she tagged Zaya and then did the wheelbarrow slam to to Jazzy, and then Zaya is trying to fight back, and then she's trying to do a her karana to Jazzy. But of course, Jazzy has a strong alpha female. She is that's her nickname. Definitely, um, definitely did side slam her, of course. And then while and then. Jazzy attacked Jenny, and then Jenny started to attack back and forth on Saya. And then while in the middle of the match, guess who came out? Rhea Ripley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rhea Ripley coming out, and then you saw Piper. She's not focusing on the match. She immediately start attacking Rhea Ripley, and then they all brawl out, leaving poor Zaya Brookside all by herself with an alpha female and a spoiled princess, which that's what the whole crowd chanted in the beginning, spoiled princess altogether. So Zaya did try to like fight both ladies, but then mostly on Jenny. She did the double knee, of course, the code breaker to Jenny as while well, Zaya was trying to like recuperate it and of course Jazzy yell. And then Zaya did did face slap Jenny and then of course trying to do a head scissor to Jenny. Two counts, and then the broken wing, wing to Jenny, like between the posts. But then again, Zai tried to carry Jenny like that. But then you saw Jenny, unbeknownst to Zai, Jenny did attack Jazzy, right? And then like both the attacker, whatnot. And then Zaya did the crossbody on top of the the post, slamming both Jenny and Jazzy. But then again, of course, Jazzy was the only woman in the ring while. Jenny is outside, and then, and then did a sidewalk slam, and then of course did her finisher to Zaya and won the match. And team of Jenny and Jazzy Gabbert won. And I feel this is like a pretty decent match. I feel like it's kind of be a little bit too predictable knowing what's going on. I must admit, I like 
Rhea Ripley's um, t um, tank top she was wearing. My body, yeah, not funny. yours. That was funny. Good brother Chris, what do you think this match altogether and the whole like interruption from Rhea Ripley? Um, I remember last week's NXT party when I think it was Jerry asked me, "Do you want to see this few uh, few continue between Piper Niven and um, Rhea Ripley?" And I told him straight up, I said, "No, I don't want to see this no more because it was always a cold and warm feud for mm -hmm. that three month build. It didn't really do too good." But right. now, I guess the feud is still continuing between Piper Devin and uh, Rhea Ripley. So if we're going to get that match at NXT Cardiff, don't make it a one-on-one -on -one match. Make it a no disqualification match or something. Anything right. you want to do. The tag team itself, <laughs> it was decent to a degree. I think the only problem I only had about the match was when Zaya was going for that uh, crossbody to um, hit both of them. Jazzy should have never fell. Yeah. At all. She should have never felt at all. I'm like, okay, you're like one of the alpha females. You Come on. You got to come on. Really? You could have just like let Jenny hold it as well. She can fall back a little bit and you're catching her. Hit the finisher. One, two, three. And it would have been over. So right. that's the only thing I had a problem with. I'm not surprised that Jenny and Jazzy won. Hopefully this feud is over because Jenny... Jenny right now has one of the best records in mm -hmm. NXT when it comes to the women's division. I think top five. Top five. This feud needs to be over. Like, Zaya Brookside cannot catch a break whatsoever. Yeah. She, she cannot catch a break. Just end the feud. It's over. Oh, Zaya. Yeah, that's all I got to Exactly. Say. Especially the fact that you have Jenny and Jazzy Gabber as a tag team unit together. Yeah. And piggyback to the... The promo for the NXT UK TakeOver Carter, what Jenny said. I mean, we all want to see her in the TakeOver, but the only thing that she got to do, get rid of Jazzy Gabbard. I mean, I know that, like, Jazzy is part of Jenny's insurance, per se, but I feel that she should be better on her own. And I feel that, like, in the long run, they still continue on as a team, but then, of course, I think one of them needs to be turned and then have a feud against each other. And that's why we'll have like a brief short feud for that. It will make sense because them as a tag team, it's kind of like saying that it's going to be great. But then at the same time, it's like cooling, cooling down. And that's like one of the ex prime example of it as well. Um, right. Guys, let me ask you this. Would you guys like to see Rhea Ripley versus Piper Navin or Ginny and Jazzy Gabbard, Gabbard versus... A, a tag team at TakeOver Cardiff. Evan, what do you prefer? <clears throat> really, at this point, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of in the middle there because I like Jazzy and I I like Jenny a lot, and I'm gonna get to that in a minute once uh once we bring up some later segments and everything. But I mean, I could I could I could go and see one more round of a. Uh, Rhea and Piper, you know, and have them settle this issue and get this over with and let this be the blow off to the feud. I wouldn't mind seeing one more match, but let this be the last one. Okay. Good brother Chris, what do you prefer? If it, if one of the match would, would you like to see in TakeOver Cardiff? Like Evan said, I'd rather see one more match between Piper Nevin and um, Rhea Rimpley. Yeah. Give them no disqualification. You can't just have just a regular match. You yeah, just, give them something. It's like, like if they really want to tell this story, you need to build this up every single week. We got three more weeks left of that take for show. Right. You know, you know, yeah. Triple H wants a show stealer. I'm not going to say anything else. You know, we got to, you know, it's it's about NXT UK. That's you know, right. But, you know, right. you guys know what you know. What I'm I know, about. even though you and I, we I are the mod we are the admins of one of the notable Facebook group, but this is NXT UK, y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I'm going to have to agree. I'm going to, I'd rather see Rhea Ripley versus Piper Navid. I'd rather see like a, kind of like a grudge match. No DQ match is good. A grudge match would be good. Hell, even make it a street fight match for all it matters. But like, shoot, I just want this feud to end once and for all to see that right. because I know in NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool, Rhea Ripley has a match 
But she lost the title to, of course, Tony Storm, which I know the holiday Chris Mace is not too fond of, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get to that in a little bit, too. Yeah, absolutely. With yeah. that, so I would like to see that in particular. But overall, it was a good match. A little bit predictable, but it was like a pretty much like a show st- showcasing match for all four four contender, but mostly Jenny and Jazz Gabbard. Yeah. Anyway, moving on, what we talking about, we get to see a video promo for an upcoming match that has been announced for TakeOver Cardiff. Well, it first announced, which is the NXT UK women's title between the champ, Tony Storm, versus Kaylee Ray. And I'm glad that they show, like, the interview segment for um, Tony and Kaylee Ray from their perspective, especially when they face off before, like, from Progress Wrestling, WXW Now. And ICW, like, like seeing what they can bring out to the table, especially like long history when they first started out till where they're at right now. And I must admit, Tony Storm before her like her '80s glam metal gimmick she has, she looks like a young Kelly Kelly, and I was like, the hell, like with her ring gear and all that. Oh. Chris, I did not know. No, no, no. I, I was like, when you said Kelly, Kelly, I'm like, wait, I'm like, ah, oh. yeah. Before uh, she had that two tone streak and her attitude and whatnot, but like, you know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Like her old yeah. ring gear that is like pink and and yellow. It's like seriously though, <laughs> but yeah. it's a really good way just to like hype up of this match for that in particular. I know. Holiday wants Kaylee Ray to be the new champ for that because he's really sick and tired of Tony Starr being the champ. That's kind of like a little bit John, like John Cena ish, yeah. calling her title shiny, shiny, guy. shiny motherfucker. <laughs> yup. So pretty much that. So anyway, um, Chris, what do you think of this video package altogether? I, I, I love feuds and I love video package like this. You telling the story of these two when they used to wrestle at other independent wrestling shows in the UK. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed this whatsoever. I can't wait for this match at NXT Cardiff. Um, you know, I'm not going to give up my preview predictions just yet for that show, but yep. I think it's, you know, it's about to be that time that maybe Tony Storm needs to drop the title or, you, you know, you know. Or you know, it's 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 gonna be that time maybe. Yeah. Time was, I know it's Tony time, but is it running out of time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So. All right, Evan, what do you think of this so far? All right, so this is probably where I'm probably gonna stir up some stuff. You know what I mean? Because I like Tony. I respect Tony. I like what she did during the May Young. Both of them. You know, she she's a great athlete, great wrestler. She's stale. There's no there's mm-hmm. no secret. There ain't no doubt about it. She's stale. She's corny. She don't have a personality. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 she, she, she can't cut a promo for nothing. So that like the whole thing, is, and this is being real, sorry. But the whole thing is, is that it's about time. I, I feel like this lengthy NXT UK women's run, this title run has exposed her. In some ways, because when we see her at the May Young, we, we see her, um, you know, on these one off matches in these tournaments and stuff, you know, we get behind you, but we're behind your performance. We're not just behind, you know, what the what the persona is or any of that. But when I see her on the mic, I go to sleep. You know, what I'm saying beautiful girl. But when I hear her, she talks, I go to sleep. I think the shiny, shiny thing is lame. I think it's all lame. You know what I mean? I think. No, seriously, I think that, you know, she got exposed with this title run, like she has some work to do, but um, but I don't think Kaylee Ray is the answer either. To tell you the truth, I don't really like either one of them. I like the I like the feud, I like the video package. I don't like either one of them as champion. I think that the most um, uh, the most valuable and the most obvious choice for this is probably Jenny. So. I think that that's probably the person who's going to take the title off of Tony Storm 
And, you know, it might not be. And that's, that's probably why I'm not looking forward to the match that much, because I already have my dark horse. I feel like Jenny is the next most logical person. We were talking about her earlier. And I heard what you had said, Cindy, and you were saying the jazzy thing, right? That mm-hmm. that you feel like you need to kind of break up with her. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll kindly and respectfully disagree. And I'll put forth, like I said before, that jazzy is the diesel to Jenny's Shawn Michaels. That if Jenny is going to make a run at Tony, she's going to need Jazzy. And so I really feel like she's probably the next logical challenger and she's probably the next logical champion. So that's where I, that's where I stand on all of that. Damn, Evan. <laughs> you said a really interesting point in your... Man... D- I mean, if Holiday saw your statement about the whole, like, Tony Storr situation, man, he will applaud you big time because he cussed I, I, I believe yep. Jerry will call, will message me out of the blue when he listens to this. He'd be like, hey, you, you think we can get Evan on the show again? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Or for those of you know, he would, have to get up, he would have to get up 3 o'clock in the morning, but <laughs> hey, this would be. Oh, yeah, no DQ we'll Galaxy. Comment down, would you like to see Evan again? But we're going to save that, y'all, for that. Because, okay. man, he said a really strong point about it as well. But, you know, <laughs> as always, time would tell. Like, what's going to happen yeah. Like when Carter takes place or even the aftermath or a week before Carter? Because anything could happen. Anything. Like, anything could happen. Like, adding to a speculation or whatnot in that particular matter. So... Yeah. I mean, you guys said a really good point about the video package altogether. That's really spot on. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to find out what's going to happen next comes Cardiff. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on here. So commercial break. And then after commercial, you have a backstage interview, of course, with Eli Dragonoff or what the hell last name is? Dragonoff. Dragonoff. Okay, Dragonoff. Okay, Dragonoff. Got it. Okay. And hopefully we get the, I was expecting to hear what Eli Dragunov would say. Like, okay, guys, we get to hear him talk. We get to hear him talk. And nope. Cash is, <laughs> oh, no. Turn on the light and say, why is this so dark here? Oh, cameraman, I am so sorry to interrupt the interview with um, the Strepsia. And then he started to hum like a random song. I believe it's like a theme song. But who knows? And then all of a sudden, Eli gave him his mean monkey face. And then, of course, he barked like a dog. Chris, can you do the impression of Eli? <laughs> like, like that. Like that, that Cassius Ono walk off. When, 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 when I know Cassius Ono can be a, pu- a buzz kill, but his buzz kill is really great. I know. It's like... It's like Oh no! <laughs> right, <laughs> but he's a cool. Oh so no! Mm-hmm. Even though he's a total buzz kid, but he's a really cool, cool, cool dude. I'm just saying because I met him last year. But I digress. But then again, like with that, it comes to promo next week's match, which is actually going to be the main event for next week's episode of NXT UK. Eli Dragunov versus Cassius. Oh no! Of course. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you'll have, of course, Flash Morgan Webster versus Mark Coffey. But we're already, talk- already talking about Flash Morgan Webster versus Mark Coffey when we're all talking about the South Wales connection and NCK. We're just going to talk about what do you guys think of the um, this segment? And hell, let's go ahead and pick like who do you think will win the main event match next week? Um, honestly, this is like a pretty good backstage promo. It has like more of a buzzkill aspect what good brother chris is saying for that um this is going to be like one of those hard picks to choose from um i believe i could see cash's oh no taking it for the win i mean as much as eli dragunov is like have like much more of a po oh creepy looking gimmick and all that but and i know he has like some undefeated streak going on good brother chris three and zero so far that i know of okay why not have Three and one. Why not? So, therefore, going with Cash Ono. Evan, what about you? You know, Cash, we know Cash Ono is a longtime veteran. 
I'm just starting to really get familiar with uh, Ilya uh, Dragunov. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good athlete. I like what he's doing. He's intense. Mm-hmm. The crazy thing about him, from what I see, is is that he's hyper focused and I think a little eccentric at the same time. And I think that might be what bites him in the butt against a guy like Ono, who's seen it all and done it all. Right? He's he's wrestled against any and everybody, seen all these styles. So it's really going to be about. This is the actual test. For Ilya Dragunov, right here. This mm-hmm. is this is the one right here that will show you, are you a player in NXT UK or are you going to be somebody that's going to need to be built up for longer? Cassius Ono, to me, he is accurate what he says. He is the measuring stick in the, in the NXT UK uh, scene right now. And I feel like he's really going to show whether Ilya Dragunov is on the level or he's not. I don't feel like a victory is 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 necessarily a victory here for Ilya. I feel like he needs to show that he can hang and that will be a victory for him. You know what I mean? In, in, in certain ways, because a lot of people, when you put those two against each other, based based off Ono's resume alone, you'd be like, oh no, off top. You know what I mean? And size advantage and all these other things he has going on. But uh, I wouldn't bet against Ilya. I think he's going to have a great showing. I don't think he's going to win, but I think he's going to have a great showing. I'm going to go with Ono though. All righty. Excellent pick and excellent viewpoint, Evan. Chris, what about you? I have a feeling Dragunov is going to take Cassizano. I think he's going to beat uh, Cassizano because I know Ono has the experience. Yes, this is going to be a big test for uh, uh, Dragunov because he's wrestled some okay talent for the last few months. Mm-hmm. You got Cassizano who's, uh, who's like, well, I wouldn't say a man of it player, but like an upper card talent in the UK scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just feel like we're going to finally see the real dragon off. He's been kind of cooling down when it comes to his in ring technique. I know a lot of people don't like his finisher, especially Jerry, Steph, it is especially, weak. It and is weak. especially holiday. They do not like his Sydney G as well. Yeah. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Evan, so that's six people. So that's six people do not yeah. like his running little European uppercut. I no think does Colin like doesn't it. like it either. No one doesn't like it. Trust me. I don't like it either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think Dragonoff is going to take this victory in a good, maybe a 10 minute, maybe 15 minute match. I'm going to go Dragonoff on this one. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, whatever that outcome is for this match, I know it will say something like who will be. But realistically, I have a, okay, in my mind, if Dragunov wins and his undefeated streak is going to be 4-0, are we going to see his undefeated streak end if he has a match at TakeOver Cardiff? I mean, that's a possibility. Chris? I don't, I, honestly, I can't answer this question right now. I don't know if he's going to be a part of the card because he's not feuding with nobody major. He's mm-hmm. not feuding with anybody. He's just having match, 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 match. So, honestly, I can't give you the answer right now. I wish this match was a, you know, a takeover match. That would be really good. Exactly. Yeah. Or, like, right. have one particular somebody that will be feuding. Maybe Jordan Devlin, realistically, but I. I you know what? I, agree. I would love to see that. <sighs> That would be good. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jordan Declan versus Dragunov, shut up and take my money. Yeah, sign me up. Sign I mean, me up. Yeah, I mean, it would make more sense since, like, you know, we saw, like, the the video promo building up for Cardiff, and then Jordan Devlin say, like, why is he not main eventing at TakeOver Cardiff? I mean, it would make sense to have Devlin put himself in a match and then have Eli... Is a drag of it. again. I'm trying to pronounce his name, so bear with me, y'all. Um, seeing him go at each other, and then possibly we may see a possibility that Dragunov may end his his win loss streak. But time will tell how it will happen and how the you know how they're gonna build up because we only have it's just two matches has been announced for Takeover Cardiff, and that's like the NXT Women's Title and the. WWE UK title and that's it. And then we have a pending NXT tag t- NXT UK tag team title. Yeah. But 
Seriously, mm-hmm. NXT UK's roster is so stacked. Can mm-hmm. we please yeah. bring? Can we please bring back the European Championship? I know. I totally agree. Same. I mean, that's they say, we, they say, Trust me. Every time on the uh, tea party, we say that all the time. All the time. I agree. So, and every podcaster say they wanted to have the European um, title back, also. But oh, please, maybe a surprise announcement in Cardiff, but. Time would tell y'all. Uh, you know, NXT, NXT and NXT UK, they have a good problem going on because NXT had the same good problem going on. They're busting at the seams with talent right now. Mm-hmm. They have so much talent that they don't know what to do with that when they only had the NXT title that, uh, you know, it wasn't enough. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't enough to, to highlight the talent that was there. And it's the same thing that's happening with NXT UK right now. They're so stacked with talent that you have to have something for these other guys, man, because otherwise you're going to have guys that's just locked out of the scene that are phenomenal talents. And that's the last thing you want right now. Exactly. You know, and with that, it'll be like a perfect, good league, good balance. Yeah. But yeah. Alrighty then. So let's go ahead and move forward to the main event match of the show. Of course. The Bomber, Dave Massa, versus representing Gallus, Joe Coffey. Holy effing shit. This match was so brutal. They really hate each other, and they're trying to fight till the end. Like, holy crap. This is... I was so glued into this match. That was so amazing. The ending, however, kind of, you know, threw me off a bit, but... Well, good brother Chris, can you talk about what do you think of this main event match? You know what? I want to hand it to my good brother Evan. Mm. He's a special guest. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All oh, right. Bro, thank you. Thank you. All right. So on the main event side, this was pretty much to me everything that it should have been, even with the finish. And I'm going to get to that at the end of it. First and foremost, Dave Mastiff to me. Is a he he's a beast. He he can go. I love his style. I love the fact that he can do everything that he can do for such a big man, you know. Um, same with coffee, you know, coffee's a sizable guy, and they're both tough. And it was a smash mouth match. It was very, very physical, very, very smash mouth. I really, really like the fact that neither one of them backed down. It was like they they were after my own heart here. This is like kind of what I, I feel like my style is straight up. Go after who you going after. Never back down. If you if you get knocked out, you get knocked out. Whatever. But you're gonna you're gonna get those shots in. You're gonna lay them in. And those guys threw it all out there. And I really really enjoyed that. And that you know what? I felt like Dave Mastiff in a lot of ways brought out some of the best in Joe Coffey that I saw. You know he, that he made Joe Coffey look like a badass with the bleeding ear and all that. I really liked the match. It was good. Mm. Very. good. And you know what the crazy part is? What is it? Is that I know you were saying that the finish kind of was, yeah, you know, took the the air out of how good the buildup was. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that might be one of the reasons that they might occupy a spot at Takeover Cardiff mm. and maybe a different kind of match. Maybe what you, we were saying, some kind of no DQ stipulation or something like that, so we could get this issue over with. You know, and get it done. Because honestly, I could see either one of these guys, maybe the winner of the match, challenging Walter next. And I would be interested to maybe see Walter tangle with Dave Mastiff or tangle with Joe Coffey. I think I'd be up for that. So I think either one of these guys are in there. And I think another match at Cardiff to settle this, it'll put one of those guys over the top. Yeah, I think that would be like, you know, one of the things that would be um, the match that I'm actually looking forward to. Hell, I think that's going to be one of Dave Mass's match that is like, you know, pretty stellar because what match did he had at TakeOver um, Blackpool? Was it against Eddie Dennis? I yes, think? yeah. The oh, no disqualification the match. The no DQ match. Yeah. There you go. Why not have like either maybe a street fight match or a two out of three falls count match? Or maybe a last man standing. Whatever you got to do. You know what I mean? Whatever mm-hmm. you got to do. Guys. All that. So... I'm thinking that's going to be what's going to bring like a pivotal point for the main event. Yeah. Good brother Chris, what about you? What do you think of this match so far and the outcome? Um, I enjoyed every bit of this match because when last week's tea party, I don't know if Stefan or Jerry really asked me the question 
when that match was announced, I was not too pleased. Because I shut my I don't think they asked me the question. So I shut my mouth because I knew what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I had a strong feeling. But the story of the match was Dave Massett's ribs. Wow. When yeah. when Co- Joe Coffey was grabbing the turnbuckle, the second turnbuckle, he was trying to rip it or try to do something, like pull it, like he's trying to get away. And when Massett went to the corner, I know maybe he kind of didn't sell it at first, but he had to affect it later when Joe Coffey attacked him. The story of the match was the ribs, and I love Dave Massett's psychology. He couldn't do nothing about it, and Joe Coffey found the weakness and went to the ribs all the way to the match. Mm-hmm. I, th- this was a great Hoss fight, and I love this match whatsoever. I enjoyed this. Yeah. And then later on, I think when um, Massive hit Coffee in the punched him in the ear, I'm like, oh my god, now it's oh, like yeah. the rib, and now it's the ear. And Massive just went a little bit further, just... I think I think it was the turn po- I mean the uh, post. Yes. Ran to the post. I'm like, oh man, this is getting good. This is like, man, this is a hoss fight of the century here. Maybe mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I would go that far. Yep. That finish when they both was like still hurting and like selling the injuries, the ear and the ribs. I was happy with this outcome. Yeah. I was very happy. It, it did not disappoint because really. It needed to be a double count out or or a draw. You needed this match at an NXT takeover Cardiff. I knew that no one was gonna win this match. I knew the whole time. It's gonna be a mess up finish. Right. And the psychology and the storytelling told a story in this match, and I really enjoyed it. Isn't it crazy though that that NXT UK is doing this now too, that they're out booking these main rosters like crazy because if they pulled this off on a Raw or SmackDown, it would have been done wrong and butchered in some way, shape, or form that would have done nothing for anybody. Now, NXT UK just gave us a main event that was great. It was hard hitting. It got the fans excited. We were interested to see what was going on. It was physical, bloody, and now we're excited to see a re- an official match at Cardiff with an actual winner. You know what I mean? They made they made us want the match. You know what I mean? They made us want to see it again. They made us want it more. I I don't remember the last time I could see the main roster really doing something like that. And it's a shame to me. And it's a great compliment to NXT and NXT UK that they're able to do this. It's just a shame to me that, you know, we we dedicated ourselves to uh, the main product for so long that they forgot how to do it. So now the minor leagues got to show them how to do it which is the crazy part because this is becoming like these are nxt and nxt uk are really becoming the household brands especially Mm -hmm. fans like us you can't forget about you can't forget about 205 live they do it as well yeah i agree i agree you know what honestly i was down on 205 for a little bit but then chris had told me to give it a chance i'm impressed so yeah, most definitely for wrestling fans, these are the shows we want because this is logical exactly. stuff. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And this is what we all do, especially Stefan and Jerry. We're doing these NXT review and the NXT party, like along with Noah, Colin, Owen, Jim, Holiday, myself, and good brother Chris right here. Like we sh- took our time just to like be dedicated to s- talk about what brings in with both NXT and NXT UK and how much like how we are showcase like showcasing like yeah the enjoyment of it all as well and with that being said as well like the main event is like the perfect example that kind of blow me away like both like this is like a true hoss vibe right here and you guys kind of convinced me to change my mind about like the finisher at the end you know because like when it comes to, like, you know, with double count, it's like, okay, is there going to be any more conclusion for it and whatnot? So yeah. these guys hitting as much as they can for putting on the fight, especially with Dave Massive doing, like, not one but two, but, like, four or five German suplex total <laughs> for that. And, yes, every time German suplex, I'm thinking about Good Brother Chris saying, of course, Suplex here. Yup, that is right. So, 
overall, this is like a pretty good main event for that. The finish at the end, I know that Massive wanted to continue on the fight, but then you have Mark and Mark Coffee and Wolfgang assisting Joe, you know, to getting out of the ring and walk back to back to the backstage area. And then you have, of course, like the referee and assistant general manager um, Sid Scala trying to make sure to keep Dave Massive calm down and all that so far so it was like a really beautiful main event as well and like the takeaway is the part where like you know Dave Mass was trying to take advantage with Joe Coffey's ear especially like he trying to twist it or punch it to him in the middle of the ring that was like dang so brutal but then you could tell like with both guys they're like they're trying to give up not trying to give up even though both of them are like you know out cold or whatnot with their bodies in the line as well so I'm actually looking forward to what they're going to bring into the table. Especially, I'm going to have to agree with both of you guys. Hopefully, this may be going to be the grudge match of it all for TakeOver Cardiff. Like I said before, Massive versus Eddie Dennis's match at TakeOver Blackpool was good, but not super good. Just saying. But him versus Joe Coffey's match. Because I know Joe Coffey had like a title match against Pete Dunne at TakeOver Blackpool. But then like having like this both guys match. These match, I think it will be perfect. But yeah. time would tell, like how they're gonna bring the, um, like the match announcement for Takeover Cardiff. Because, like I said, we are. It's gonna be three weeks away. Another summer of wrestling continue, never ending. But you know, I'm pretty excited for it. There with the outcome, for it. I'm very excited of like I'm, you know, hyping up with Takeover um, Cardiff as well right. for that. All right, guys. So with that being said, in the tradition of the NXT party, we only rank the main event match just to keep the spirit alive. So we have to rank it based on a spot of T. So with that, with the spot of T, it's like a scale of one to five. You could add like a half, a quarter, you know, just saying. Okay. So with that, Evan... What would you rank a spot of T for this main event match, Dave Massa versus Joe Coffey? For a spot of T, I really enjoyed it. It was a, like I said, physical match. It wasn't the greatest thing, but it was it was fun. And it got us to where we needed to go. I'll give it a solid three and a half. All solid right. three and a half. All right. Good brother. What about you? I agree with Evan. I both take a... Um, Three and uh, two quarters. There you go. Well, I mean, this match was so good. And especially the fact that, like, you know, both guys are, like, killing each other. A real hoss fight. But I feel this yeah. is just the beginning. The ending was kind of, at first, it was like, you know, because you know me with double counters. But then you guys are bringing some more convincing way. I feel this is just the beginning of, like, their con- ongoing feud going on. Who knows, this match may be taking place at TakeOver Cardiff. I don't know. But with that being said, and right when the ending happens, when the credit shows and the ending of the show, um, I'm giving this main event match a three and three quarters. Okay. You know, just saying That's for good. that. And yeah, so overall, this is like a really good episode of NXT UK. Even though there's not like no focus on the takeover Toronto because it's just for a NXT, but they're hyping it up more for takeover Carter, and that's what I love about it. You know, I'm it got me so excited for what's going to happen with takeover Cardiff and like you know how each of the matches like come to think like which is going to be added to the main card as well. So right. yeah, so anybody else would like to add on like what takes away the show or whatnot? I really just think that it was a solid show overall. It got us to where we needed to be at. We still got weeks ahead for uh, TakeOver Cardiff. And the main objective of these shows is to kind of get us to the main thing and get us excited. And, you know, I'm more excited for TakeOver this Friday and, t- uh, you know, TakeOver UK and Cardiff uh, and later in August than I am for SummerSlam. You know, I'm way more invested and interested in a lot of the, the storylines and programs. It just goes to show you, man, they're doing it right. They're doing it right. I love it. Indeed. Indeed. What about you, Chris? Um, on the show, I, 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 it was a great, it was a good show. 
The only takeaway I was disappointed was um, Webster and um, Andrews. Like, oh, they want yeah. an opportunity for the tag mm-hmm. team. Times. That, that's what yeah. really threw me off the most. I'm like, you have not earned it. But all the, other than that, the show was it was good. Yeah, it yeah. was good. I can't wait for NXT Takeover Canada. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. SummerSlam. Um, I'm going to be working. So yeah. Yeah. yeah man. Are you going to be? Are you going to watch uh, NXT Takeover Canada? Toronto, uh, Cindy? Of course I am. I'm definitely going to be watching it on TV and all that. St- you know, staying here in California. Uh, so if you guys saw my um, WWE SummerSlam prediction video, me and good brother Chris did. I did a brief intro about it, but I'm just going to leave it at that. You know me. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm going to have to check that out and see what that's all about. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Anyway, y'all, so... That is it for this week's episode of the NXT Party. Comment down below. What do you think of the show so far? What are your favorite match and highlights and all of that? And how? Throw some speculations of what is going to be, um, what match you want to see in TakeOver Carded. So that way, um, I'll try my best to respond and all that. I know Stefan and Jerry, they're having fun out there in in Toronto along with the Simple Man Noah Foster. So NXT team over there they're actually representing and and i want to say this to myself um come for me and good brother chris Stephen and jerry thank you so much for letting us host this week's episode of the nxt party we are still continuing on with this tradition no matter what and especially having a special guest for the nxt party yeah. as well just to keep the tradition alive as well so before we go we're gonna go ahead and give plugs as well let's go ahead and start off with our very special guest of course evan lg francis take it away yeah i just wanted to thank y'all number one for having me this was a a great experience it was a lot of fun if you guys want me back let me know i'll be happy to come back you guys feel free please to hit me up on instagram hit me up on uh facebook go to work fitness Evan LG Francis, look me up, man. And you know, I'm around BTW right now. We're about to start getting that getting busy, man. I'm about to really start cracking some heads out here. Come check us out. I got events coming at the end of the month. I got one uh, this weekend, August 11th. If you're in the area, come to Nickel Park for the 5K. August 18th for the Talent Showcase, Rich City. You already know, man. I'm busy. We working. I love you guys. Thank you so much for having me. I love this and i love wrestling most of all and i love my city thank you guys you're very welcome so if you guys are in richmond california or in the east bay area or in the bay area make sure to check out each of the event evan g francis said so check it out to all the bay area no dq galaxy members as well so anyway evan thank you so much for joining me and good brother chris so if you like to be a special guest for the NXT party, especially like with Stefan and Jerry as well. Make sure to hit up Stefan Osborne and I'm going to give his Twitter account. So make sure to hit him up at twitter.com. Find him at Stefan R. Osborne or even nodq.com slash Stefan as well. Make easier or message Jerry at no DQ underscore general as well. Message them if you want to be a special guest in the NXT party. So feel free so we can all like discuss and all of that as well. And make sure to check out the Facebook group Armbar, which myself and good brother Chris, we are part of, even though I am the moderator, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you, Jerry and Stefan as well. And that's spelled capital A-R-M-B-A-R. Exclamation point. Yeah. All right. And also make sure to check out Stephen Osborne's YouTube channel at Aftermatch Wrestling as well. And maybe, maybe I'm going to post this NXT party um, review video on my personal YouTube channel as well. Just, you know, so you guys can watch it, you know, a day before I will go on NoDQ.com. Why not? I mean, something different, even though I'm kind of pretty hesitant, even I'm going through a lot, but it is what it is, but like I said, um, I'm taking a brief hiatus on social media, as you guys saw on on the um, WWE SummerSlam prediction video and all that stuff. But you guys can follow me at nodq.com slash Cindy. That's going to take you directly to my Twitter page and Instagram at simply underscore C underscore OK. 
and as the YouTube channel, as I mentioned it, at simply underscore, um, underscore C underscore OK as well. And good brother Chris, where they can find you and all that. Uh, follow me on Facebook, uh, Christopher Willis. Follow me on Instagram, Chris J Willis eighty six. Follow me on Twitter, GB Chris Willis eighty six. Follow me and Sydney's Facebook group, AEW Nation. Mm-hmm. We just hit 12,000 members, so we're just doing unbelievable numbers right now. It's really incredible. Evan is also in that group as well. Sometimes he appears here and there. He'll leave comments. You know, he, he'll troll some people in the comments. We can't, we, can't oh, we can't go too far, but anyway. I can't go it, too far, though, yeah. <laughs> but really, real talk on a real serious note, Evan – it is an honor to really do this with you. Oh, Hands man. down, Sydney. It is really honored to do this with you. And I want to give a special thanks to Jerry and Stefan. Thank you for giving me the opportunity for this. This is yeah. really an honor and a privilege. And I wanted to say something really serious here. If you know somebody who's really down the dumps, talk to them, mm-hmm. pull them aside, and listen to them. Mm-hmm. Don't kick them when they're down. Don't ever do that. If somebody's really going through problems, call your best friend, call your family, call your loved ones to check to tell them like, "Hey, I'm going through a problem." Confront them. Because like, we don't want negativity in our lives. Mm-hmm. We don't want that in our lives. We want to live in a positive attitude. That's right. When it comes to the community, when it comes to a wrestling community, I want to let that out. Just want to get that out there just now. So I wanted to leave that special message. Respect. That's right. Respect. 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 Big time. Really All right, guys. So that is it for the a special episode of the NXT party. Thank you so much for watching this video and all that and next week stefan osborne and jerry slatter will be back and i know they're going to talk briefly about their experience in toronto canada for the first time as well and also do not forget um, to a plug make sure to uh, make sure to go to nodq.com slash toronto that's going to take you directly to the facebook um, event page where that's right NoDQ.com is going to have their meetup. So that's right. Your favorite NX team members, Stefan Osborne, Jerry Slaughter, and the Simple Man Noel Foster will be there in person to meet all right. y'all, as well as the other members of NoDQ.com that will be there as well. Like I said, myself, Chris Cass, Greg Cherry, Big G, I believe TJS, but don't quote me on that, Jeff Meacham, and... David Diaz and I believe saw so Goku Shin. Um, all of us are not going to be there, but we'll be there in spirit as well as Colin, Holiday Christmas, Owen, Good Brother Chris, James. We all, all of us are going to be there in spirit as well. So make sure to check, go to nodq.com slash Toronto. That's the event page for the No DQ meetup in Toronto as well. And also, you guys, make sure to follow nodq.com on the social media page and hit that notification part um, button because you know why Stephen Osborne, Jerry Slaughter and Noah, they're going to be doing the West NXT live after takeover Toronto joining along with the, the team no DQ.com members as well. So that way you guys want to see them, show them some love, show them the support they need it as well. Just like they reach out to me and all that now giving the return for all that so guys show them some love as well and anyway stay tuned for all the latest news in wwe nxt nxt uk aew and other wrestling related news only on nodq.com as well anyway guys for evan lg francis yes for the co-host good brother chris right here and I'm your girl, yes. Cindy G, a.k.a. what the guys call me, the Duchess slash the Indie Queen as well. But I'm just simply Cindy, y'all. Anyway, you guys, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And cheerio, y'all. Cheerio. Yay. Cheerio. Yay. <laughs>